In this video, I'm going to show you how to track your footage and add videos into photo frames or photos into photo frames using Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and I've got some footage on the timeline. And this is just a handheld shot of me filming this photo frame. So before I can add anything to this, I first just need to go ahead and track the scene. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either go for the normal motion tracking method or you can do the 3D camera tracker. And this is the option that I typically prefer. So we'll go effects and presets and search for 3D camera tracker. Now we'll just drop that onto our footage and Adobe After Effects is going to analyze the footage. So now that After Effects has analyzed the frame, you can see all of these different crosses have been generated and these are all of the different tracking points. So in order to proceed, you just want to zoom in on the photo frame. So I'm going to go for somewhere around here. You can see you're getting these red targets appearing between three different frames. So go ahead and select one of these specific points. I'm going to select this one. We'll right click and we can go ahead and create text and camera, solid and camera or null and camera. I'm going to create a null and camera. So now that we've created our track null one and our 3D camera, we now need to go ahead and add a photo or a video into After Effects. So I've just dragged a photo into Adobe After Effects and I'm just going to drag this into the composition. And as you can see, this is just a standard photo. I'm just going to scale this down. And now I'm just going to convert this into a 3D shape by selecting the 3D box. And as you can see, the photo has moved over there. So play this out. You can see that is doing something really random. And that's because the position is really far in the foreground. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to increase the scale to 100. And then we're just going to go into transform. You can see we've got position and we've got this number 960, 540 and then zero. So 960 is going to affect the horizontal axis. 540 is affecting the vertical axis. And then as you can see, this one here is affecting the forwards and back. So you just want to increase this number and push this back into the frame. So push this back. Let's go for 6,000 to begin with. We'll play this back. And again, that's doing really weird movement because it's too far into the frame. So we'll push that back even further. We're up to 13,000 now. Again, that feels a little bit too far forward. So we'll take that further again. We're at 20,000 now. Let's starting to get there. If we increase the scale of this a little bit, you can see we're getting there. There's a lot less movement now, but the problem is it's still a bit too far forward in space. So we'll go to 30,000 on that. Play that back. We are getting there. Again, we'll go even more. 40,000. And I feel like we are very almost there. It's still drifting a little bit. So we'll go... 50,000 on this. We'll increase the scale so we can see what we're doing. There you go. It's almost there. You can see at this moment in time, the photo is almost near the edge. But by the time we go over here, it's drifting a little bit. So that means we need to go back even more. We'll go 60,000. And that looks like it's locked in place. So we'll play that back. There you go. That looks like it's now locked in place. So what we're going to do is we'll increase the scale now. So we'll fill up the frame roughly. Then we'll go into effects and presets and we'll search for corner pin. That should be under distort. We'll drop that onto our photo. And as you can see, we've got upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. So I'm going to go into the opacity and we'll pull this down. Then we'll just go to the upper left frame. So the upper left corner of the frame. We'll pull that opacity down even more. We'll go upper left, select this icon and place this in the upper left. Now we'll go to the upper right and place this point in the upper right. Then we'll go down to the lower left and we'll drop that in the corner. And then we'll go lower right and we'll drop that into the corner. Now we'll pull the opacity of that layer back up. And as you can see, that photo is now sitting inside of that photo frame. But now we need to go ahead and play that back and make sure that it's not drifting again. Make sure that it's in the right place. So we'll play this back and that does look great. We'll zoom in again, play that back one more time just to make sure. 
as you can see it's drifting just the tiniest amount you can see in the top left corner at this moment in time it's pretty much in its perfect spot but over here it starts to drift again so we'll take that back some more so we'll go 65,000 we'll increase that scale again and feel free to adjust the corner pins if you like by the way so there you go that should now be sitting in place we'll play this back and that looks great that photo is no longer drifting anymore and it's perfectly within that frame so we've officially motion tracked the frame, we've analyzed the frame, added the photo into that in its own 3D layer. Now all we have to do is just color correct this photo because at the moment it's too saturated, it just doesn't look believable. So we'll go effects and presets, we'll go for hue slash saturation, we'll drop that onto the photo and we're just going to begin by pulling the saturation down a little bit and that looks instantly more realistic. And then we need to go ahead and we need to add some reflection onto this. So we'll go layer, new, solid, we'll make this a white solid, we'll press OK, OK, we'll make this a 3D layer, like so. Then we'll just decrease the scale of this and play this back. As you can see, we've got the same problem that's now drifting all over the place. So we'll go into the position of this and I believe the position before was 65,000. So we'll go position 65,000. We're going to have to increase the scale of that. And as you can see, that's now sitting perfectly on that photo frame. So we'll just increase the scale. So we'll increase that so that it's larger than the photo frame. We'll pull the opacity down, go into the pen tool at the top of After Effects. And we're just going to draw a reflection over the front of this photo frame. Doesn't need to be perfect, but something like that. We'll pull the opacity up. We'll go into the masks, mask one increase the mask feather just a little bit so somewhere around there and then we'll just go ahead and pull the opacity down to around 30. We can pull that down even more if we wanted to as well but you can see just adding that on if we pull the quality up to full this is before and this is after. It's just giving that photo frame a little bit more depth and of course if you're moving as well from side to side then you can always adjust the mask of that reflection so that the reflection moves whilst the camera's moving as well. But with all of that said and done that is the photo now added into the photo frame. Now it is really tedious it's always really important that you've got the photo that you're adding in in the correct space so the third position setting make sure that you've got that set to the right number typically people try and correct this by decreasing the scale but you have to increase the position on the third setting if we go in here so that this third position the 65,000, is the number that we needed to get this if this was set to 10,000 and the scale was pulled down as you can see it flies all over the place because it's not in the correct space it's kind of creating a parallax effect. If the camera was there and you were filming me and there was something in the foreground, if the camera moved, this object in the foreground would move differently and independently to I would. So it's really important that you get that in the correct space. So 65,000 in this example, and that will glue to the scene exactly like that. But there you go. That is how you add photos into photo frames using Adobe After Effects and the 3D camera tracker. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.